Jolie Bindo is the crazy old man in the dangerous woods. I'm content with the impression I give. No discussion about eccentric Star Wars characters is complete without mention of Jolie Bindo. This ex-Jedi lived as a hermit on Kashyyyk during the Jedi Civil War, offering aid and wisdom to passers-by before he left his hermitage to join Revan in the quest for the Starforge. Eccentric doesn't really do Jolly justice. He was, by his own admission, crazy, living for decades in the Kashyyyk Shadowlands, the immensely dangerous floor of Kashyyyk's planetary forest. He was quite the character, an old man with all the energy of a boomer who partied too hard at Woodstock that one time and has never shut up since. In this video, we'll be telling his story. Attention, Sergeant on deck! 3,956 years before the Battle of Yavin, during the Jedi Civil War, the redeemed Revan and his companions traveled to Kashyyyk looking for a star map an ancient Rakatan artifact that could lead them to the Star Forge, the Sith Empire's superweapon. Revan's quest led him to the Shadowlands, where he happened upon an old man in Jedi robes, fending off a group of local beasts with a lightsaber. The man identified himself as Jolie Bindo and led the group to his home, a small hut built out of ship parts under a giant Roshi lock. He had a favor to ask of Revan, recruiting him to clear out a group of poachers affiliated with Zerka Corporation. In exchange, Jolie would join Revan's party. After Revan did as Jolie asked, Jolie helped him find Kashyyyk's star map and then joined him on the quest for the Starforge. Bindo became part of the crew of the Ebon Hawk, traveling with Revan all over the galaxy looking for the star maps. He proved himself an asset, putting his lightsaber and force abilities to use on Manan and Korriban. He fit right in with Revan and the other Jedi traveling with him, but Jolie was adamant that he was not, in fact, a Jedi. But he had been before, once upon a time, and eventually told Revan his story. Jolie Bindo was recruited into the Jedi Order long before the Jedi Civil War, so long ago that he jokingly claimed that Coruscant was a small town with a well at the time. Back when he was still a Padawan, he set out on his own, traveling across the galaxy and having all sorts of adventures, much to the chagrin of the Jedi Council. Back then, Bindo was willful and brash, often violating the Council's orders and Republic law to help people in need. He and a partner often smuggled food and supplies to planets under blockade, undoubtedly saving many lives. Of course, Jolie and his companion typically had to steal those supplies first. S stole is such a harsh word. They would have donated those goods readily enough if they were compassionate. I considered it a tax on the greedy. During one smuggling run to the Yukata system, Jolie was shot down by an enforcer named Nayama. She took him prisoner and foiled three of his escape attempts. However, Nayama and Jolie fell in love over the course of Jolie's captivity, and eventually they fled the planet. Against the wishes of the Jedi Council, the two got married upon returning to the Republic, which led later generations of Jedi to refer to secret Jedi relationships as pulling a bindo. Along the way, Jolie discovered that Nayama was Force-sensitive, and he requested for the Council to let him train her as a Jedi. The Council said no, Jolie was still a Padawan after all, and Nayama was too old. However, Jolie didn't let that stop him. He trained Nayama in secret, it seemed to be going well at first, and then tragedy struck. In 3996 BBY, two fallen Jedi, Exar Kun and Ulik Keldroma, declared themselves the new Dark Lords of the Sith. They formed an alliance of Dark Side cultists, Dark Jedi, and Mandalorians, which they led to war against the Republic. During the ensuing Great Sith War, Exar Kun's promises of power and a new Golden Age of the Sith turned many young Jedi over to the Dark Side. One of them was Nayama. She attempted to turn Jolie to the dark side as well, but Jolie refused, and Nayama tried to kill him. The two fought a fierce lightsaber duel, which Jolie eventually won. He had Nayama at his mercy, but he found himself unable to deliver the killing blow. Nayama escaped and joined the Sith armies, and to Jolie's shame, she killed many Jedi during the war before she was slain herself. After the Great Sith War was over, the Jedi Council put Jolie on trial for his actions. 
As Jolly later recounted, the trial was a travesty, but not because he was found guilty. On the contrary, the council found him innocent. Even though I deserved every punishment and more, they let me go. Mitigating circumstances, they said. I deserved compassion, they said. They said I had learned wisdom the hard way. For all I had done during the war, they wished to raise me to full Jedi status at long last. That, that was when the Jedi left me. That was when they failed me. Jolly left the Jedi Order and took to wandering the galaxy again. After a few years of travel, he ended up on Kashyyyk after a bad crash landing and decided to stay. He built a home in the Shadowlands out of the wreckage of his ship and began exploring the forest, fascinated by Kashyyyk's wonders. During this time, Jolie naturally became acquainted with the Wookiees. They occasionally ventured down to the Shadowlands to hunt, usually as part of various honor rituals, and Jolie offered help to those who became lost or wounded down in Kashyyyk's depths. At first, the Wookiees were wary of him, but they warmed up to him eventually. For a while there, the Wookiees actually thought I was some kind of benevolent forest god. Amusing, really. I set them straight eventually. I had no idea that's what they were thinking for a long time. I just thought they were being friendly neighbors, leaving fruit and such for me. Later, when I started to understand some of their grunting, I realized they would say prayers to the hairless one before descending into the forest. <laughs> hairless one. I used to have plenty of hair, I tell you. <clears throat> After he clarified that he was not, in fact, a god, Jolie became pretty good mates with the Wookiees of nearby Wookroo. He did what he could to help them escape Zerka Corporation's slavers, who controlled Kashyyyk at the time, though there was little he could do after Wookroo's chieftain, Chanda, began making deals with the slavers. Jolie Bindo lived a simple life on Kashyyyk, ignoring the outside galaxy for decades as the Republic suffered first under the Mandalorian Wars and then the Jedi Civil War. That was until Revan came along. Upon meeting Revan, Jolie decided he'd had enough of Kashyyyk and was more interested in where Revan's path would take him. Jolie was puzzling to some of Revan's other companions, many of whom were devoted to the Jedi and the Republic. This was because Jolie didn't seem to take the quest seriously, or at least not as seriously as everyone else. Yeah, that's right, Sonny. The Sith are the greatest evil to hit the galaxy since, well, the Mandalorians. And they're the worst thing since XR Kuhn, blah blah blah, etc, etc, etc. Okay, old man, you lost me there. Are you trying to make a point? Look, everybody always figures the time they live in is the most epic, most important age to end all ages. But tyrants and heroes rise and fall, and historians sort out the pieces. Malak is a tyrant who should be stopped. If he conquers the galaxy, we're in for a couple of rough centuries. Eventually, it'll come around again, but I'd rather not wait that long. So we do what we have to do, and we try to stop the Sith. But don't start thinking this war, your war, is more important than any other war just because you're in it. Even more puzzling to the Jedi in the group, Jolie, despite acting like a Jedi in virtually every respect, refused the title. He didn't hold the Jedi Council's binary view of the Force. He saw more shades of grey, he claimed, than light or dark. The capacity for good or evil, like the Force itself, is in all living creatures. And belonging to the Jedi Order, or the Sith, or any group, won't change what you are at your core. Of course, despite his rhetoric, Jolly was ultimately a light sider. As much as he talked about shades of grey, Jolly recognized the dark side as a threat and never dabbled in it, maintaining a sense of good and evil. Nonetheless, he had his ideological disagreements with the Jedi Council, believing the Jedi were too strict about love and attachments. He talked at length with Revan about his beliefs, often presenting his views through allegorical stories, some from his youth and some likely made up. Jolie accompanied Revan from Kashyyyk all the way to the Starforge. He fought in the Battle of Rakata Prime, in which the Starforge was destroyed and the Sith Empire was vanquished. After the Jedi Civil War, Jolie became reacquainted with the Jedi Council. He declined to rejoin the Jedi, but he didn't go back into exile either. Instead, he went on special missions for the Council now and again, doing what he could to help those left struggling in the galaxy by the devastating war. When the remnants of the Sith began a campaign of extermination against the Jedi, Jolly dropped off the map. He may have been killed, but it's more likely that he simply laid low for this period, abandoning the Jedi once more. 
his ultimate fate is unknown. Naturally, Jolly Bindo comes from Knights of the Old Republic, which you should absolutely play if you haven't yet. But what do you think? Are there other KOTOR characters you think we should discuss? Let us know all that and more in the comments section below. And as always guys, thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.